Hello everyone, it's Susie. Welcome back. And um, if you're new here, welcome in. This here is part two of my vintage costume jewelry and more show and sell. So I am going to begin where I left off. And uh, we're up to item number um, 16. And as you can see, I grabbed a pump to show you what these shoe clips would look like. Um, this is just a shoe I have from work. Wardrobe gave these to me to wear and set dressing, you know, they put these um, plastic rubber heel protectors on them. So when you walk, you don't make noise. Anyway, these are the beautiful, look at these. These are glass, most likely crystal, rhinestone shoe clips. These are branded. They are by the, the company Musi, M-U-S-I. And they're in great condition. So I figured, let me grab a, a shoe and just show you basically what it would look like on so it kind of reminds me of um i don't know if anyone has watched sex and the city and sarah jessica parker has these pair of blue um i believe they're suede i uh manano mananos how do you say that Man, manol manolas manolos <laughs> It's been a while since I've seen that, but I recall she had a shoe clip, which was rectangular, I believe, that was on the pump, and it just really gave that shoe a pop. Well, anyway, here is what this here shoe clip would look like. We have this here, and that's how they are placed on. There are these uh, little spikes on those two tabs where you press into your shoe. This here will be item number 16. The next item are shoe clips as well. In fact, I think I have three pairs. Uh, these here are rectangular, as you can see. Beautiful. I believe these rhinestones are a bit larger. You know what? Here you can see the comparison. They're about the same width, um, but this here shoe clip feels a bit heavier for some reason. Um, here's the back of these. These particular ones are unsigned. And let me show you what this would look like on. Wow. Now that is gorgeous. These remind me more of a... Uh, the shoes from that movie. So we have this here, beautiful, clear rhinestone shoe clips. Every stone is intact. This here will be number 17. The last pair very, very ornate. These are larger. In fact, this pair has the most rhinestones compared to the other two. Here is the, the second one. Here's the first one. It's, um, it's a bit curved, as you can see. Here's the back side of these. Really beautiful. And every rhinestone is intact. So let's see what this looks like. Wow. That's pretty. So we have this. And this will be, oh, let's get those out of the way so you don't get confused. This one here will be number 18. There you go. 
Okay, last one. Last shoe clip. These are gold tone, as you can see, with that swirly design. These clips are actually hinged. So there is a hinge right there. I don't see um I don't see a, a signature or brand. But let's see what these would look like. Okay. Shoe clips are like brooches for shoes. That's pretty. So we have this pair. Gold tone. This here will be item number 19. Okay, next up I have this, um, it's a set that came in this box, pretty box, but there's no writing on the box. It is a brooch and earrings set. Wow, beautiful blue glass, faceted beads, um, rhinestones. I love when they have the multi-prongs around them. You have the filigree open work leaves. This is all in silver tone. Here's the back of it. I don't see any um, markings. The pin is nice and straight. It is a rollover clasp. Let's take a look at the earrings. Pretty pink, velvety. Clip-ons, clip-ons. Take one out. Let's take a clip on earring out. Really clean. Looking at these um, earrings, they're the same exact size as the flowers on the brooch. It does say something on the back of it. I don't know if you can see that. But on the, on the back, it says pending, patent pending. Yeah, right there, patent pending. Okay. This set is in really nice condition. Comes with the box. I will place that in better. I'll do that off camera. Um, so we have this set. Beautiful. Really nice. And this will be... Oh, here's the, the sun, the sun. Item number 20. Next up, I have these snuff bottles. And um, I had purchased these from a fellow YouTuber, and they were sold to me as possibly a Cinnabar. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure. So I was going to list them online, but, you know, because I can't authenticate these, I'm just going to sell them for what I had paid. And um, let me show you the first one. I am just really um, amazed by the intricate design. Look how tiny those lines and flowers are over here. This is like a, a landscape motif. You have a woman, um, trees, that looks like a pagoda or maybe a, a house with um, a staircase the sides very very intricately carved here on the opposite side i believe this is a gentleman i see a maybe a water bucket these look like um, ocean waves beautiful tree here is the side of this one the bottom of this does have some um 
Chinese characters. And the top is copper. And there is a spoon that is cork. And here is the top design. So we have this one here. I'm going to um, make this a choice. These items will be uh, 21. And the first one will be A. And let me show you the second one, which of course will be B. But let me finish with the first one first, just so you can see it again. This is 21A. Twenty one B is more like a, a, a vase or a vase. This one here has beautiful flowers carved with a very nice backdrop. You do have carvings all around on either side. It's almost as if they're in a frame. And then on the opposite side is another um, floral motif. And you have a butterfly and a dragonfly. This, I guess, is missing that bottom piece. This one here also has a little spoon. It is brass. There's a brass ring. And also, the spoon is connected to a tiny piece of uh, cork cylinder. So we have this one here, and this one is 21B. So here, I'll bring them back out again, so you can see them. 21A, 21B. Next, I have this gold tone brooch yeah this is a brooch and there are seven beautiful green glass faceted let's see bezel set rhinestones look at that multi sawtooth bezel a very unusual brooch i thought it was a hair clip but nope it's a brooch and as you can see on the back um that shows um it's a foil back and some of the foil has been rubbed off therefore the green glass shines through and also some of the gold wash is rubbed off as well so this was pretty uh pretty loved very long pin rollover clasp very unusual this one here will be item number 22. Next up, I have this brooch. It is, I believe from the 60s, um, it is a bezeled sugar glass oval brooch with the floral motif. It has, I would say this is a brass tone, uh, filigree scalloped frame going around you have these really nice prongs holding the center turn it around very ornate filigree backing and if you look close i guess i should bring in the magnifier for this you see on the rollover no on the on the pin it says can you see that made germany so this is signed made germany on the clasp pin it is slightly bowed it is a rollover clasp this here brooch measures in at two inches high and about an inch and a half 
wide. So we have this here, beautiful brooch, and it is number 23. Look at this set. Oh, Mother's Day is coming up. Does mom like green? Look at this beautiful brooch. Awesome. Green. Prong set faceted. Stones all around. Circle brooch. It is, um, it's on a gold tone setting. Roll over class. That pin is very straight. It is in beautiful condition. I'm drawn to the multi prongs around each one of around each one of these stones. So you have the larger ones um, making up the wreath, and very um, smaller ones in between. And it has a set of matching clip-on earrings. Ah. Oh. Adorable. So this here, this set will be item number 23. Oh gosh, going through my um, box, I noticed I forgot this um, shoe clip. This is another set. This one here has um, kind of like a ribbon of rhinestones falling down and it's uh, like a bow motif so what the chew back here just to show you what it would look like now this is pretty I looked at it and I don't see any um, signatures but all the rhinestones are intact and that's what it would look like so here we have these shoe clips bow shoe clips and this is going to be item number 24. bringing something very fun and different uh these are clip-on earrings these are very lightweight beautiful flowers these are i believe celluloid very old there are some, let's see, looking at it close, this one looks good. This one here, um, I think there's like some coating missing on that petal. But boy, are these interesting. Really, um, they're pretty large, but very lightweight, very vintage. I would say two inches around. We have this pair of really neat clip-on earrings, and this is going to be number 25. Next up, I have this brooch. This is a heavy piece of glass. Beautiful amber tone, faceted. Could use a bit of wiping in between those leaves. I don't know, is this a pineapple? Hmm. There's the back. It can also be worn as a necklace. And it is signed Sarah Cove. So this is a Sarah Coventry. Beautiful pendant brooch. And this will be number. 26. Next up, I have this really beautiful brooch. Uh, can you tell I like green? I like blues too. This here measures in at, I would say about almost two and a half inches high and um, about an inch and three quarters wide. Beautiful glass prong set and faceted stones. You can see the different shapes and sizes within. 
it is on a gold tone setting. Many of the stones are open back. Here you see the rollover clasp. The pin does stick out quite a bit. And the best part about this particular, it has weight to it. And um, here, let me just show you. Yep, three of those stones are uranium glass. So we have this gorgeous, did I say Mother's Day is coming up? Um, <laughs> brooch. And this will be item number 27. Next up, I have these gorgeous button screw back earrings. Beautiful green. And they are glass. They are signed on the back. These are brass tone. And on the back of them, if I could show you like that, let me grab the magnifier. They do say made in Western Germany. They look like candy. So this here was originally purchased some time ago, but the person um, never followed through. So I'm bringing them back and these beautiful vintage glass earrings will be item number 28, uh, signed, made in Western Germany. Next up, I have this beautiful red and clear rhinestone heart brooch, open work. There's the back of it. No brand. This one here measures in at about an inch and three quarters wide and um, a little more than an inch and a half high. I love the way it glistens, you know? Um, that's due to all the little facets on those stones. This is a pretty one. This one here will be item number 29. So, you know, one more to go. I did say I was gonna do uh, 15 like the first part. And the next one um, I'm gonna talk about because there's a lot of history behind that brand. So let's move on and see what that is. What I have here is a beautiful silver tone bracelet. As you can see, it's a high setting of this intaglio, beautiful carved swans two swans um, there is a sawtooth bezel open work design it is hinged and um, there is a safety chain and right here you press that down to open it and there you could see the inside okay there is a couple um, um, couple marks over here and over here but there is a brand and I want to show that to you and um, we know this brand for their beautiful mesh purses but they also make jewelry as you can see it says Whiting and Davis Company mesh bags. So we have this here, Whiting and Davis bracelet with the double swans, glass. This is um, vintage due to the size, it's only um, six and a half inches in circumference. This here will be number 30. Now, let me talk about Whiting and Davis. 
So, in 1876, Wade Davis and Company was the precursor to Whiting and Davis. That company was founded by William H. Wade, Edward P. Davis, and uh, Lewis Heckman in Massachusetts. Charles Whiting joined the company in 1880. He was only 16 years old, but he moved up the ranks to management. In fact, in 1892, when he was 28, Mr. Whiting designed the first mesh bag. All rings were formed and joined by hand. By 1912, a machine was invented to automate that mesh making process. So, back to the company in 1896, when Mr. Whiting was 32, he and Mr. Davis formed a partnership, raised money to purchase the company. And they renamed it to the Whiting and Davis Company. By the 1920s, they were so well known for high quality purses. It was basically the coveted accessory for actresses, flappers, well-dressed women everywhere. They became the world's leading mesh handbag manufacturer. And in the 30s, they collaborated with high profile designers such as Paul Perret uh, or Perot. And um, he was known for very colorful and um, beading and added a Parisian style to their purses. And they also collaborated with Elsa Scaparelli. And all these creations continue to attract stage and screen actresses and just became the latest craze. Continuing on in the 1940s during World War II, raw materials were um, in a shortage. So Whiting and Davis temporarily stopped production, just like many, many other jewelry brands had done to turn their attention to supporting the war efforts by manufacturing um, radar equipment, among other things. But after the war ended, the company returned back to business. So continuing on in the 50s, they were again very popular with the screen and stage. And in the 60s, which was the mod era, they started making simpler styles or cleaner lines. In the 70s, they had, um, I guess, think uh, disco, Donna Summer, ABBA, gold mesh purses, halter tops, and dresses. Moving on to the 80s, here's a cover of Cosmopolitan. That publication's from uh, September 1983. Oh, it only costs $1.75. It features uh, Christy Brinkley wearing a Whiting and Davis gold tone metal mesh dress. Wow. Very disco. Very sexy. Moving on to the 90s, here is an Absolute Vodka campaign featuring a uh, Whiting and Davis silver tone metal mesh dress designed by Anthony Ferrara. And can you believe that dress cost a half a million dollars? Wow. So moving on to the 2000s until current day, their vintage and new accessories and handbags are still an iconic staple in one's collection. In 2002, there was a book published called Whiting and Davis Purses, The Perfect Mesh. And it was entirely about the Whiting and Davis handbags. So that's a wrap on part two of the vintage jewelry and more show and sell. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, thumbs up. Can I have a thumbs up? Subscribe if you haven't already. 
subscribe buttons down here free to subscribe if there's anything you would like to purchase all you need to do is email me my email address is dragonflybees at gmail.com purchasing instructions at the end of the video and below in the description box all you need to do is email me uh, and state the number of the item since I'm using the numbering system makes it so much easier um, comment below I'd love to read your comments and I will try to answer each and every one and if I don't at least you'll get a heart to know I acknowledged you so uh, with that said thank you everyone for spending some time with me today and coming up let's see coming up I believe next month I will be doing another collaboration with the fun ladies that I did um, the fun box with as well as the um, thread up fabrics and textiles uh, collab that I did recently this time it's shoes yeah so more to come on that um, they're still trying to decide what day but it will be in may so we're already in um the last few days of april time flies so okay thanks everybody for spending time with me i'll see you soon thank you so much bye